814 is Guillermo of Norway, consistent distance runner, fifth in the London in last year, and ninth the year before, the winner of the Houston uh, this year. Those two Tanzanians are going to be difficult to sort out later on. They look like twins. They come out of the same pod. It's uh, John Bura and Jumari Kenga that wears the 8968. Jumari Camden. He's only five foot uh, four. He's an army captain in Tanzania, but uh, they do look very much alike. Bura and Ikanga. Bura wears 967. Ikanga 968. Koji the leader. The same just behind him. Bura's there. Ikanga there. Nakayama, Caverno, Di Costello in the pack, Ford in of Italy, Kevin Foster, and Brendan, interesting point about this, I mean, in the women's marathon, we expected there couldn't be a break at the later stages, and that was the way it worked out, although we knew Mota would try and break them, she didn't succeed, but she did win in the end. Um, can you see anyone here trying to break away? Uh, some of the Africans, of course, are unknown. And this is far too early for a break, obviously. Well, right in the middle of the picture, Nakayama of Japan. He ran two hours, eight minutes on this course last year. He's come here, he won the Japanese trials. He's here to prove he's the top Japanese marathon runner. He usually goes out in about 63 minutes for the first half, which is world record pace. Look at him checking on his watch. And what he'll find when he checks on his watch is that they're running about two hours, 10 pace, and he's normally used to running faster than that. But it's a nice, gentle start. It's very, very sensible. It's good to see that the Britons are right in amongst it in the group, are just drifting off the pace and staying in the pack. And you know, Charlie Spedding's reputation is such as a marathon runner that a lot of them, and I've noticed Kevin's glanced across a couple of times, Kevin Foster, and I noticed John Tracy, they're gauging their race by Charlie, because Charlie is the one who they respect the most at gauging his own effort. This man, Nakayama, just gone out of the picture there, the tall Japanese. He's twice won on this course. He set the course record in the Asian Games, and he's won a Seoul marathon. That's Kvermo of Norway, incidentally, but the tall man in the middle. And what is interesting, it's, it, we've seen the fun runners come uh, into uh, marathon running, and we've seen a massive explosion of the number of people taking part. We've also seen a massive explosion in the amount of money, because it is a spectacle, and the shoe firms are involved, and, uh, and the New York and the Boston and the London Marathon are renowned spectacles around the world. But the Japanese are the last remaining country to stick to the letter of the IWF law about no appearance money unless it goes into one of those funds that's kept for them until after their career. And in Japan, although they work for major shoe companies and other great organizations who look after them in terms of work and let them off in order to train, at the end of the day, they do not get paid or allowed to receive or keep any appearance money. And yet, running in this field are probably half a dozen of the world's richest athletes that have made a great deal of money. Mercedes, Benzes, and 35,000. And Di Costello has been known to receive 75,000 dollars of appearance money alone but it's the Japanese that do stick to the letter of the law whatever money is paid their way goes into their subvention fund and is kept for them to their finish so their future is secure but they don't live like millionaires while they're running around the 5,000 meter mark we should get a really firm check on the pace then Nakayama and Bura and Ikanga, Tanzania, Hussein, the Kenyan, 766, it's Madragon of Mexico, and all the three Kenyans are up there by the way, Waki Hura, the world champion, wearing 675, and Kip Sang, 657. The Japanese have got a very powerful trio, though we've seen a lot of Nakayama, uh, but the Japanese reckon their best man, and he's certainly their most experienced man, is Seiko, who won the London Marathon, you may remember. Interesting to contrast the Kenyans, what's happening to them in terms of financial rewards, now that some countries are paying for success. Uh, what happens in the Kenyan uh, uh, society is that these very successful runners, and they've had five gold medalists already, 
uh, when they return home, uh, they do get a monetary reward. They're bought a plot of land which they're expected to farm and keep for their future, raise their family. And they do actually farm it for about four or five months of the year and, uh, and do their running the rest of the time. And that's uh, President Arab Moy, uh, who sees these as, a, as great for the Kenyan uh, people uh, and supports them in that way and really wants to keep them as part of Kenyan society rather than all of them go to American universities. And there's been a big sway uh, away from the American universities, although uh, some of their athletes here, Hussein, of course, was at uh, University of uh, New Mexico. But they are attracted back into Kenya rather than lost to Kenyan athletics, and that's where they've built up their success. There's a tremendous number of either returned or are home-based athletes in Kenya, and they do get rewards when they get great success. Well, we got uh, a check at uh, five kilometers on the pace. Quite reasonable, but not over fast, around two hours, ten minutes. So they've started sensibly. And you may have noticed on the profile of the course there, having reached the 5,000 metre mark, the course starts to drop away and down towards the river. Gently going away from them. Perfect running. And by the way, the road surface all the way on this marathon is absolutely fine. There's no cobbles, no stones. No broken road. Good, smooth, even tarmac. And a very long blue line, which after a while, you know, if you keep looking at it, it can do things to your mind. And I, I noticed I would hate to be in the lead in a marathon looking down at the road because that thing can mesmerize you, especially when you see the kilometer clocks coming up every every single kilometer here on this course. They, um, they have a kilometer point. And I was talking to Kevin Foster in the village the other day, and I told him that uh, you better write down on your arm the individual kilometers that you're looking for, because he's going to gauge his pace and try and run about two hours, nine minutes pace. And the thing is, when you get to like 17 kilometers, and you're trying to work out what pace you are, when you've run all your life in miles, to come to a major championship in running kilometers, it's quite complicated. But Kevin's a, a doctor of science, so he knows all about that. Spot one or two of the leaders for you there, Hussein. As the Kenyan on the inside, 652. Kipsang is 657, wearing the white cap. Bura in the yellow vest of Tanzania. Alongside him in 967 is Ikanga. Right on the outside, Nakayama, the Japanese. In the middle, Mondragon, the Mexican, wearing 766. Kavermo of Norway is up there. Also up there for Australia is Hartman. 635, the Japanese going through as Nakayama, Kevin Foster, Charlie Spedding, De Costello. Costello having a smile there with Charlie Spedding. De Costello, very, very experienced marathon runner. He's now 31. His best time ever, two hours, seven minutes. 51 seconds. He is the Commonwealth champion. And the 1983 world champion. We had a close up there of Conover, the American uh, who won their trials. Conover wears 1080, Mark Conover. And he won their trials. It was only, there he is, on the outside of the pack with a white hat and the American red shirt with a broad uh, uh, bands on it at the top, Mark Conover. He won their trials as a surprise winner, and it was only his second marathon. And he won his first marathon after only having run one half marathon before. And he says that uh, he hasn't had enough experience, and perhaps that's going to help him because he doesn't want to think about the problems. Well, there was a threat, really, that the World Track and Field Championships would overtake the importance of the Olympic uh, athletics program uh, because so many nations supported it. But, of course, with the uh, reunification of the Olympic movement here in Seoul, only seven countries not taking part, this is the greatest entry ever for any Olympic Games in history. And we're getting a true marathon here. There's only one big name, I think, missing, and that's Dinsamo of Ethiopia, the fastest man in the world on paper. The only man ever 
to break two hours seven minutes It is a pity that Dinsamo is missing. Um, these marathon runners get a chance to run against each other. That's the, we're going down, further down the field. There's um, Gerard Niebuhr, the, the Dutchman, who was second in the 1980 Olympic Games in Moscow. But uh, as I was saying, the marathon runners get a good chance to run against each other all the year round in the big in the big world marathons in in Tokyo and in New York and in London and so on. And Dinsamo is one that they respect enormously. And I mean, the boycotts, I think the Kenyans have decided that boycotts don't work any, any good for you anymore. So the better thing to do is to come here and do what they've done on the track, and that's much better than having a boycott. I don't think there's any question, in fact, that the boycotts over the years, they started really in 76 with the African boycott because of the uh, some of the countries playing rugby against South Africa. And it was a protest by the uh, black Africans. We've had protests since, of course, uh, for other reasons. In Los Angeles, and earlier in Moscow, but they achieved absolutely nothing. The only people affected by the uh, boycotts were the athletes themselves. The problems the politicians were protesting about remained unchanged. Stone. The American born in Samoa, by the way. 1040 in the foreground. Kip Chop Chop. Kip Chop Off, rather. The first of the Soviet athletes we've seen. And the Soviets, they've got all three of their runners out, including a 41 year old Sokolov, who wears 1062. He's down among the starters. Uh, but the Soviets in the marathon, uh, Brandon, don't seem to be producing many. Incidentally, look at the lads going on the other side of the table there. There's so many of them in that leading bunch, they can't get to the table, so they're split. Go. But you can notice from that very shot how anxious they are to take water and sponge themselves down. Every one of them, including the Kenyans, the Africans, all of them, have went dashing for the sponges there. I'm just having a look at the uh, split times, David. They went through 5,000 meters quite casually, about 2 hours 10 pace. For the last 2 kilometers, they've speeded up they ran about six minutes exactly for the next two kilometers, which is then about two hours seven pace. So you can see they're beginning to race. They've got the first five kilometers out of the way, and then they decided to start running. The Portuguese on the left there were in 764, just behind the leader. 764 is Jesus Herrera. And when you looked uh, at the uh, pack behind, we're about a kilometer, uh, the other two uh, uh, Portuguese appeared to be back there, but there's three up. Maybe a Mexican vest, but it's uh, there's two. Uh, there's two Mexicans running side by side. I confused Portugal with Mexico. Suddenly, it looked like uh, I thought I spotted his number. I think. Uh, they have speeded up, undoubtedly, they've got on this very fast part of the course because they are beginning to string out a little bit. The Kanga on the far side of Tanzania. The two Kenyans are Hussein and Kip Sang. That's Kip Sang in the white hat. Up there, Herrera and Mendragon of Mexico. Both inside two hours 11. That's Kavermo of Norway. 675 is the other Kenyan. The world champion, Douglas Wakihuro. Yeah, just to correct myself, it's three Mexicans in the leading pack. All the three Mexicans are there. Herrera, Mondragon and Regis. And there we got uh, the man to watch. Sala of Djibouti. The second fastest man ever, followed by Costello, followed by Kevin Foster. All keep an eye on him. 